So, ladies and gentlemen, my beautiful people, you beautiful sons of nature. Let's talk about what's changed with this team, because a lot has changed with this team, as is promised. We have simmed through the entirety of the preseason. We are at week one, and we are now an 83-rated team. Because we spent a shitload of money in free agency that we shouldn't have spent, probably, because you see our funds in the top right-hand corner. It went down by, like, 150 million or so. So, yeah, we, uh, oof. Oof. It's bad. So, let me catch you up on everything that happens. Because a lot of people have left, and because it's not the preseason anymore, yeah, shit's, shit's changed. Shit's changed. So, this is our team for the season. For the season at quarterback. Paul Devlin, number one overall pick. Paulie Devlin. We, we spent so much money in free agency, I can't even afford to turn on the fucking lights anymore. There he is. A nice atmospheric... Welcome to Paul Devlin. He's finally there. What a guy. Paul Devlin. So he is our guy. He is our dude. He is our dude. Our dude Arena. Davis Mills is still here as a backup. And we ended up bringing in Blaine Gabbert as the mentor. Davis, hello, by the way. Uh, we ended up bringing in Blaine Gabbert as the mentor for that extra bit of uh, training XP. So obviously we drafted another quarterback. We just let him go. We let go of a lot of people. I have used the practice squad this year, though, so you'll see that in a minute. He actually might be on the practice squad. But yeah, Yo Gabba Gabbert is here. And again, uh, boost weekly training XP for other players at their positions. So mentors are super fucking important to have when someone like Paul Devlin's on the team. Running back, we signed Cam Akers. It was expensive, but we did it. We also signed free agent Cordero Patterson, who's going to be a return specialist and is a mentor. Shouldn't have meant to have actually been good at some point. Probably. Uh, and then Damian Pierce is still here, but he is now the secondary option behind Cam Akers. So again, on one hand, I'm like, we should have kept Damian to see if he could break out. On the other, I mean, Damian Pierce is a year younger and 10 points worse. So we will likely, by the time we're done with the Texans, do another franchise that will be a draft of glory where someone like Damian Pierce is our guy outright. But for now... Sign Cam Akers, see what he can do. And uh, if he can't get it done, then, you know, shit, we'll see what happens. But at the same time, you could argue Damien... I mean, he, he's fine. He's good. He's reliable. But he's not that elite option that we might need, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Uh, and then, again, Patterson's there. Fullback, we went with Engold as opposed to the uh, rookie that we ended up drafting. Wide receivers, Calvin Ridley, and of course we signed Jerry Judy as a free agent. We still have Nico Collins, John Mechie, Tyrell Turner, and now Julio Jones is on in the same role that we had T.Y. Hilton in last year, uh, where he is a mentor. So you objected to win now, or are we trying not to? I, it's, we're the in-between. How this team does will determine what we end up doing moving forward. But we ended up getting more free agents than we thought we would because somehow people actually wanted to come to Houston. Tight end, Cole Kmet is alongside Austin Norris. Austin is our number one, but obviously they are both superstars, which is great. Mentor Cameron Brait, brought on. Left tackle, Jedrick Wills, another free agent signing with a surprise, surprise, a mentor in Cornelius Lucas behind him. Left guard, Kenyon Green, who I think is still star dev. He is. We'll talk about someone who did have a good dev pattern who doesn't anymore, and I'm pretty upset about it. And I don't know how to explain it, but we'll get there in a second. Yeah, we, we love Alabama receivers. Uh, Brian Witzman, Witzman, whatever, brought on as a mentor. Center, Matt Hennessy, free agent signing. Mentor behind him and Brett Jones. Right guard, the starter is going to be Dennis Brooks for obvious reasons. But we do end up keeping Gabe Jackson as a mentor as well. Right tackle, Al Jenkins is there. Dennis Kelly as a mentor. On the edge, Rodney Corbett, but he'll be behind Mr. Eddie Goodwin, who is also hidden dev. So Eddie is our starter on that left-hand side. Another mentor, Mario Addison. Right-hand side, Jonathan Greenard's there. Lawrence Guy brought on as a mentor. Defensive tackle. Remember last season how it showed Shakira DiCarvalho as a superstar? 
I didn't edit him. Somehow, he has dropped. Emotional damage. Well timed. Uh, he has dropped from superstar down to normal. I didn't know that could happen. But that is the biggest, swiftest kick to the sack that we've had on Madden yet. He went from superstar to normal. And I don't know why. I don't know why. So that kind of blows. We do have... God, you guys are going nuts at this again. We do have Jaquan McPhee. Uh, behind him, though. That one's louder than the other ones. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's a, it's a long alert, too. It's a long alert. We'll be here for a minute. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, linebackers, left-hand side. D'Angelo Graham is still... Nope, he's down to normal dev, too. I don't know why people are dropping like that, but shit sucks, bro. Uh, middle linebacker, we sign Miles Jack. And then, of course, Deacon Slate is behind him. I'm kind of regretting signing Miles Jack at the moment because the coach we ended up with runs a 4 3 and not a 3 4. Fuck. Uh, Dante Hightower's there as the backup. Right hand side, Mick Robertson. Mick Robertson. Who looks like a 37 year old dad. Mick Robertson will be ahead of Kyle Van Noy on the depth chart. At corner, we signed A.J. Terrell somehow. Uh, Stingley will be the second corner behind him. Stingray still has star dev. Of course, Desmond King's there. Then you got Darius Phillips and Patrick Peterson as a mentor. Safety, John Johnson with Jalen Petra, who we haven't traded away yet, and LaMarcus Joyner. Right-hand side of the other side is Derwin James, who, of course, IRL just signed with the Chargers. Logan Ryan's with him. And then the man at kicker. We signed Justin Tucker. Who needs him? Easton Trout, baby. The highest rated player in the season two draft. Easton Trout. I feel like the setting that controls the stars, superstars, might be the call for it. You are 100% correct. That is exactly what happened, is my presumption. But I couldn't prove it, so I didn't want to say it. So we do have draft picks and everything. Practice squad, we do have some decent players, including Ashton Broussard, who I wasn't going to trade or cut, but he could benefit from doing all right there. Christian Harris. Jerry Collins, uh, that right-hand linebacker, he also dropped down to normal. So, uh, yeah. We, we got some dudes. And then Randolph had uh, hidden dev as well. So, honestly... Honestly... If it was that setting that just cost me some dev options, that's going to blow. Can I fix that still? Can I fix that? So, desired X-Factor players, superstar, star dev. I mean, even then, you can only boost it up by so much. But, yeah, let's just at least push it to the cap. Or maybe it is just outright trait regression. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Honestly, that's right. Trait regression is a thing. We'll put these back. I forgot about that setting, even though it's right in front of my face. Well, that rating fucking sucks. It's notoriously harsh, apparently. Apparently, we should have played with that off. But for now, hmm. Okay, so, chat, you got a big decision to make. You got a big decision to make, right? Trait regression. On, off. If we put it on, if we keep it on, it stays as it is. If we turn it off, we go back and give our dudes their proper potentials back. What do you think? What do you think? Because on one, on one hand, and again, the poll's up. Feel free to refresh the, uh, the stream if it's not popping up. Again, we had a guy go from superstar dev down to normal in one season. If this was off, that wouldn't have happened. Was he so bad that he deserved to regress that far? I don't think he was. I mean, he's 22. He's 22. So that's kind of an issue. As someone at 22 can just whoosh, fall off a cliff in one season. You know? Guys get worse in real life. It's true. That fast, that was pretty harsh. I'm alright with either. I'm alright with either. It looks like off's gonna win out though. 
It does look like off is gonna win out. Which I don't hate. He was he was fully scouted. He was he was a super stack. So like dude was twenty two and I think it's bugged. It looks like off is gonna win out on this. If it ends in a tie, it'll stay as it is. But it's one of those decisions where I'm like, ah, we can do it either way. So I agree that it is a little bit extreme. Going to make the franchise easier. I mean, not necessarily. But. But yeah, we had four or five dudes lose their, uh, lose their dev pattern. You know? Like four or five dudes immediately fell off a cliff. So. That's the tough one. Again. Helps you have this flash in the pan kind of guys. It's going to be a close vote. There is a close argument. Maybe we'll just leave it then. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll just leave it then. Maybe we'll just leave it then. I'm alright with it either way. It's certainly... So here's the thing. If we do a draft of glory, we will probably turn that off. But here it gives more emphasis to be like, well, screw it. Why not? You know. Again, it's it's a really tough call. It's a really tough call because, yes, people can regress. But let's uh, let's mark down who regressed. In that season alone, right? Let me check Damian Pierce. He was still star. So if I am not mistaken, in terms of regression, terms of regression, DiCarvalho dropped from superstar to normal. Graham dropped from star to normal. Uh, the right-hand linebacker dropped from star to normal. So quite a few players dropped. Quite a few players did. That also means you can't get as hyped about getting a fucking superstar in the draft because you don't know if they're going to keep it. Mm. We'll leave it. We'll leave it as is for now. Screw it. We'll experiment around with it. And we will leave it as is. Uh, so you have seen our team. You have seen our team. We need to figure out scouting and our approach for this upcoming season. We need to figure out our approach for this upcoming year. So obviously, quarterback-wise, we're not going to bank on scouting quarterbacks. Like, one of these two should be good enough. Running back-wise, we shouldn't have to get anybody. Fullback-wise, who cares? A high-end wide receiver would be nice to eventually kind of replace Calvin Ridley. Tight end-wise, we shouldn't need anybody at all. Um, left tackle with Wills, we should be fine. I mean, maybe like a long-term center to replace Hennessy, but we really, really don't need much. Can some players progress, though? Can a normal become a superstar? Yes, but not easily as someone can apparently fall off the map. All right, we need a wide receiver. We need an edge rusher. We'll double-check his stats here because we're already here. Honestly, we might now need a defensive tackle because DiCarvalho fell off so hard. One season. Uh, had 61 tackles, four sacks in his rookie year. 61 tackles, four sacks in his rookie year. Is that worth, is that enough to fall off from superstar to normal? I don't know. That does seem pretty damn harsh. And if D'Angelo Graham fell off, too, we're going to need outside linebackers. The middle, we should be good. Or at least a left outside linebacker, because we do have Robertson on that right-hand side. Uh, corners, we could use a corner to replace King. And then safeties-wise, we should be fine. I mean, about 28. Okay. So we kind of have our five main positions that we want to scout out here in Season 3. Let's see what we can find. There was a quarterback at the top of the initial uh, report, that being Javier Childs out of Illinois. So let's see what we have. Prospects. So in the Northeast, I mean, immediately there's Terrell Conley, and that is a huge position of need for us. And there's a wide receiver. Named Blaylock. So, a lot of wide receivers, actually. So, immediately, the Northeast region should be 
uh, defensive end and wide receivers that we look to bring in. Worst case scenario could also be a corner because of that duo there. In the southeast, we got some old linemen, which we don't necessarily need. Tight end, a corner. A lot of offensive linemen in the southeast. Is this the all Madden version? Yes, it is. Got a wide receiver, a couple of tight ends. I mean, wide receiver seems like a good way to go. Defensive tackle. Honestly, it's looking like wide receiver, defensive tackle, or corner for the southeast. That's an interesting one. Found any generational talents. Uh, yes, there were two in the, in the first season's draft. One in the first, one in the second. Uh, let's see, in the central, home of Javier Childs. We got an edge rusher, got a linebacker, got a corner. We do have a wide receiver as well, so any combination of that. And then West, who are the top guys in the West. Bunch of linemen in the West. We got an edge, we got a corner. Okay. So in the West, definitely a defensive edge option. Corner and wide receiver again. So we're gonna have gonna have some trouble. Some trouble sorting this out. Let's see what we can do. There is no doubt our national, our three-star national scout needs to have edge as their primary focus because that is certainly kind of what we're looking at here as the top players in the draft. So, let's look at the three stars again. Ideally, it'd be an edge rusher to start. Actually, here we can just sort out this way. Let's see, who do we got available? I should have gone from the other direction. Okay, so defensive end. We do have two defensive end options. One with linebacker, one with defensive tackle. Indeed, Mobski, indeed. I'll be on Madden for a while. So defensive tackle or outside linebacker. Doesn't really matter what we do either way. Okay, so at least we know there's an option there for our national scout to take uh, defensive edge and then either an outside linebacker or DT. Uh, we are going off of needs and the strongest positions in the draft. So essentially it's like, okay, what do we need? And then let's look at, you know, the strongest position in each region and assign it that way, if that makes sense. I hate that you can't have more than two three-star scouts. You can only have one three-star scout. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it personally. I actually really like the scouting system, I gotta be honest. I do. Uh, some people apparently don't, but I, I like it a lot. Um, so really quickly then, for our two-star. Two-star option, wide receiver quarterback we don't need. Wide receiver quarterback, interior offensive line we don't need. So we got defensive tackle. Neither of those are going to work. Defensive edge doesn't work. Wide receiver tight end. This is looking rough for us all of a sudden. Outside linebacker. Corner wide receiver. All right, we are going to have to go with Doug Baldwin. Dodge, what's up? The tweet? I put out a tweet. You might have missed it, but I put it out. That's why we also say uh, go to the Discord, because there's always alerts from there, too. All right, so uh, we need this corner and wide receiver scouts who can be based in either the southeast or the west. Either or. But we are definitely hiring Doug Baldwin as our two-star. In terms of our one-star scouts, or a couple of one-star scouts, since we kind of know what our national is going to look like, how many one-star scouts are there? A shitload. Okay. So we did have a couple positions of need for wide receiver. Wide receiver quarterback, wide receiver corner, which could be Thornton. Oh, Discord didn't even go through, really. 
Shout out to I Apply Pressure for the follow. Appreciate you. Very much appreciated. Okay. Let's see what we can do. So we do have Thornton there. Wide receiver cornerback, wide receiver corner. All right, so we got two wide receiver corners for the one stars. Okay, we don't need tight end at all. We don't need safety at all. Running backs. Crap a lot of running backs. We don't need a quarterback scout. Don't need the offensive tackle. Outside the linebackers. Okay, we got Amber Nelson, who is an outside linebacker, defensive end specialist, which is good. Middle linebacker we didn't need either. Interior offensive line we don't need. Defensive tackle. So we do have Ortega, who is a defensive tackle, defensive end. Scout, which is good. That's what we're looking for. And defensive end, it can only be a one star. Offensive tackle. We do have Lynn Glover, the DEDT setup. We got Lulu Hernandez, who is a defensive end outside linebacker setup. And then we have the three star corner. Okay, so I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. I kind of know our full little setup here. Let's go back over to scouts. Polly, what's up? So Baldwin was a corner wide receiver specialist. So let's see. We got corner wide receiver. Linebacker and edge. DT and edge. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm just trying to think of the best way to balance this out for us. What is the best way? What is the best way to balance this out? So we got a corner wide receiver. Let's go back over here. I go from the wrong direction again. That this really needs to be uh, like the the sorting needs to be optimized a little bit. So it's either Heath or Travis Bailey. It's either Heath or Bailey for this. Uh, so let's see. Heath was the DE outside linebacker. Bailey was the DE defensive tackle. And we got Baldwin as our two star. And then we got our one stars. Do we want to focus on defensive edge in DT or linebackers? I feel like... DT was more prevalent. Defensive tackle was more prevalent. So our national scout is going to be Travis Bailey as our three star. And then Baldwin's good with cornerbacks and wide receivers. We got a couple of scouts that are good corners and wide receiver. So I think, I think we got our, I got our, I got our guys here. As I'm stammering and stumbling over my words, love it. Uh, so defensive end, outside linebacker, Lulu Hernandez. We need to go to wide receiver with Lamar Thornton. And we go English is optional here, and we go to the offensive. Uh, Line, I'm kidding. The outside linebacker position, we need Nelson. Amber Nelson. There we go. So, a little bit complicated with where we are as a team right now, but we should be okay. So, Bailey, again, is going to be our national scout. And then from there, let's see, corner and wide receiver. And then wide receiver and corner. Oof. AJ team's looking pretty good. All right, let's have Doug Baldwin go to the West region. We'll have Baldwin go to the West region. Yeah, apparently the Discord alert didn't go up, but I streamed the same time every single night, so, you know, pretty much. I mean, if I'm streaming, it's at this time. 
Let's see, we're gonna have Thornton go to the oh, northeast good region. For you. Shout out to you for that follow. Appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. I'm gonna slightly slightly mess around with something I hate having to try to avoid fucking copyrighted music, but I also don't want to listen to non copyrighted music all night. Alright, so we got Thornton in the Northeast. Which means Amber Nelson is going to the Central Region and Lulu Hernandez is going to the Southeast. Perfect. That took a little bit longer than I wanted, but again, we, uh, we do have to be a little bit thorough. We do. So that is set up. Hopefully we'll do okay there. And now, we look ahead to our first game against the Green Bay Packers, where hopefully, 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 so we will stay with these guys as our primary focus here. I do use the three-star for the biggest team need, yes. Well, I mean, it depends on, like, if the three-star lines up with the needs that we have, though. Like, I can only adapt based off of what they hand us. All right, so Deacon Slate is looking good. Deacon Slate's looking real good. And then Cole Komet, we brought on as a free agent. Sweet headband, and honestly, we can make him better at blocking. Make him better at blocking. Again, he was superstar Deb, 25 years old. So we take on Green Bay. If we win, hey, so be it. If we don't, again, we'll just kind of adapt as we go on. All that I care about right now is that we make a shat load of money. <laughs> uh, we need to make a good amount of money this season. We really do. We really, really do. Otherwise, it could be... It could end up being a little bit problematic with player re-signings as well. Uh, just because, again, like we, we went overboard. I really didn't expect so many people to like immediately sign their contracts uh, off of, oh boy, Devlin's debut. Um, I really didn't expect so many people to accept those just you know middle-of-the-road contract offers with kind of like not amazing interest. So it's kind of put us into a bit of a weird spot where I am worried about our, our financial situation. In terms of no touching, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Still on the fence about playing 23. There is a 10-hour trial through EA Play. There's our man. Davis Mills at the end of last season looked back at the field for what could have been the last time. As Mr. Devlin takes over at quarterback for the Houston Texans. So... We shall see how we do at the start of Season 3. We shall see how we do. Brand new coach as well, Kevin Stefanski brought in. He was fired by Cleveland, and we said, that's our guy. Because he's young, and we can actually kind of mold him into what we need him to be. We are, at the very least, going to Sim until halftime as we always do. And let's see how the boys do on their own. First quarter, 7-0 Packers. 10-0, 17-0. At the end of the first quarter. Let's go to the half. 17-3, 24-3. And we're down 27-3 at halftime in the home opener. Holy God. Well, let's try a kick return with Cordero Patterson. Nope, it has Patrick Peterson out here. Is Cordero hurt? Just our luck, Cordero Patterson's hurt already. Elsewhere, what's up? Um, I mean, I can't make it much worse. So we might as well kind of see what this offense can do. For whatever reason, we're looking shaky, even though we're the home team. But we'll, we'll see what we can do. That's only Acres' fourth carry of the game. That's horrifying. Damn good blocking. Wish that guy was able to set the edge a little bit better. I turned right into that. 
I'm a bit intrigued at the fact that Cam Akers has barely had the football. That is a little bit concerning. Especially when we're able to just kind of run it right down their throats with Akers. I am going to see if I can get us a touchdown and spark us a little bit, which means I'm about to throw a pick or fumble. Like, just wait for it. It's going to happen. The funny thing is, for me right now, it's only recommending... It's only recommending running plays. <laughs> Maybe Devlin struggled enough that the game's like, please don't have him throw in the second half. I don't know. But it has literally only recommended running plays so far. Oh boy, Cam. At least we'll get him some yardage. How the hell is he not tired? I've given him the ball on every play of this drive. All right, we're looking for Ridley or Judy. Oh, there's our draft class, baby. Read it and weep. <sighs> All right, let's see if we can actually uh, if we can actually run the football again. Oh God! All right, well, right now our offensive line is getting manhandled. That's not helping. We got Ridley deep, Collins. I don't really like Judy on that route. There we go. That's picked. Yep. Yep. Well, Devlin, if that wasn't your first career pick, I'm sorry. Hustle, young man. Hustle. Oh, my God. What a tackle. All heart. All heart. <laughs> I just I just released that way too late. I, I'm well aware. There was just nobody open, man. Just kind of had to hope that Alexander wouldn't be able to do that, but... uh. It's Alexander, so yeah. Okay. We lost to Green Bay in week one. That's what that's what happened. I was using the new placement passing, which is why I was trying to aim it kind of to the outside, and uh, yeah, it didn't happen that way. Can the boys score a touchdown? Yeah, we got one. And another. Fourth quarter comeback. Where the hell was this the entire game? What the hell? We're a fourth quarter team, apparently. The hell is this? Well, we have no timeouts left and they have a fresh set of downs, so this game is over. There it is. Well, they fought back at the end of the game, but it was uh, pain and misery throughout the majority of it. And Captain Eyebrows loses in his first game as head coach. Mr. Devlin loses to Aaron Rodgers in his uh, his first career game. Apparently, we had 349 passing yards, but he also threw two interceptions that I uh, had nothing to do with. Nice three interception game for the uh, for the young man in his first game with the team. Oof. <laughs> that is the. Uh, that is the only way I can think to describe what just happened. Is, uh, is oof. That was a rough time. Not, not the best debut in the world. Uh, Devlin goes 33 of 49 with 349 yards, two touchdowns, three picks. All right, Paul. Uh, Akers did have a touchdown, but didn't get a ton of the ball. So I guess Stefanski doesn't like to run it. Two touchdowns for Nico Collins. 14 receptions. Jesus. Ridley averaged 19 yards of reception. Three sacks allowed by Jedrick Wills in his debut. We have had some terrible luck in terms of tackles on this game. Uh, 14 tackles in his debut for Miles Jack. One sack for Eddie Goodwin, the rookie. Easton Trout. One for one with this first field goal attempt. Um, that, that was uh, not the, <laughs> the hope instilling debut I was hoping it would be. Austin Norris becomes a scheme fit. But yeah, that first game was uh, 
Yeah. 